was thinking of a lot of times like the founding people aren't around to see it uh, so these guys decided they would like speak just when I was thank you so much all right well look I'm I'm a teacher really and I like my job is to bring people information that you would not have even heard of yet. It's like when we first started marijuana. Nobody had gotten the idea that you could do mass rallies. That this was really something that would be, should be addressed through a civil rights movement. We did the first smoke-ins. And the smoke-in was actually the main uh, expression of it for many years. And the, the straights, the people in the suits, the people at normal said, well, you can't go out and just, like, be in people's face. You can't have that 15-year-old over there smoking the bong because you're going to get us all in trouble and, you know, we're corrupting minors. So they were against marijuana smokers coming out in the same way every other group came out. And actually, it was an interesting story. Now, this is a story I should really tell you because it has to do with Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon, of course, did the first big war on marijuana after Anslinger was fired by the Kennedys. Because you see, John Kennedy was a pot smoker who took LSD. But that's a different story. The story I'm here to tell you about is a man who got in in 1968 and all of a sudden, all over America, marijuana disappeared. It took about a year, but they had this thing called Operation Intercept. And by the end of 1969, there was no pot, but there was beginning to be a lot of Vietnamese heroin. This was very suspicious to us in the marijuana movement. So we called up for a smoking on the 4th of July. It was an innocent enough thing, it was kind of a peace demonstration, but Richard Nixon called his own event for exactly the same time to drown our event out. He called it Honor America Day. And we announced that we were gonna have people uh, to try to defuse what we thought could be potentially a, a confrontation, you know, fisticuffs, you know, like Trump, Trump supporters who decide to punch you out, kind of thing. So, it got on national television, it got big, and they had this group of people at the head of the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool in the Honor America Day. It was very hot, they were all dressed in heavy clothes. And we were all dressed in like shorts, <laughs> you know. And we couldn't get at them, so people dived into the reflecting pool and marched right up to where they were doing their thing, chanting, one, two, three, four, we don't want your fucking war. And see, this was right after Kent State. And everybody said, you're not gonna be able to get away with this, but we did. Anyway. So, Richard Nixon, was obsessed, he was like a Donald Trump, he was obsessed with the idea that George McGovern had sent us. So he broke into the, the Democratic Party headquarters trying to find proof of that, and if it, there was Watergate and the impeachment, you all, all know how that turns out, right? Turned out great. Well, anyway, come to, you know, being under Jimmy Carter, we thought we were going to have marijuana be legal in 18 months. It was like now, right? With Chuck Schumer being here, he's got a Moore's Act. And I hope it gets through. Because Bernie Sanders pointed out there's a, actually something in the Controlled Substances Act that Richard Nixon left for himself to be able to emergency deschedule any drug. Right? And that was because marijuana had a commission called the Schaefer Commission, and the Schaefer Commission hadn't come out yet. So they put a clause in the Controlled Substances Act, which is still there, 
that the president can order the attorney general to deschedule any drug. And Bernie said he would do it five minutes after he got into the White House. So the Republican, the Democrats promised us if you let us elect Biden, because we really got to stop Trump, and I really, I agree, we really got to stop Trump. We will frog march Joe Biden in to sign the bill. That's what they said. And, you know, that is the situation we're at now, and I do not understand exactly why Chuck Schumer didn't talk very much about what's happening in the Senate. I'm very much, I'm very concerned. There's a lady from um, New Hampshire named Jean Shaheen, and she's also in the news lately because she's very concerned about the United States withdrawing from Afghanistan. And she says that we can't legalize pot until we deal with the opiate crisis first. And you know, they're never gonna, never gonna totally solve that. So that's like saying, we're never gonna legalize pot, right? Well, we have a letter to get people like Carol Maloney and Chuck Schumer to send to the president ordering him to, or imploring him, actually, ordering or to order the Attorney General to deschedule Ibogaine. Because I, I'm sure you, many of you know about Ibogaine, right? Unfortunately, most people in this country never heard about it. This is one of the other things that this organization and this march has been working on. We have a cure for drugs. And in case you don't know, 30 minutes after you take your Ibogaine in the morning, your heroin withdrawal completely goes away and never comes back. We have the cure for methamphetamine. We have the cure for cocaine. It works for alcohol and tobacco. It's an equal uh, opportunity. Uh, Addiction interrupter, uh, one third of all the people who did it for heroin found out that they put that just put down cigarettes. You know, so this happens to be from an African sacred plant. And it's like knowledge that was been stolen from African Americans that there's this plant from Africa that can cure everybody of heroin addiction. So we're going to need a little help here getting this across because we're going to ask Schumer to get Jean Shaheen to co-sign the letter to Joe Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland asking them how Ibogaine could be Schedule 1. Not because it's a miracle cure, because it's easy to be a miracle cure and be banned. Marijuana is a miracle cure. It was banned for a long time. No, it's Schedule 1 because people actually do not want to take it. If you take too much, it makes your car sick. Uh, actually, the amount you have to take to get off heroin, it's only compared to heroin withdrawal, which is one of the worst things in the world, that it's kind of tolerable. But there are people, there's no Ibogaine spots on the corner. This is not a drug in commerce, in illegal drugs. This is not there. So how could it ever have been Schedule 1? It is supposed to have a high potential for abuse. And, I, you know, I have a friend named Randy Critico. You know him? He's, he brought Roger Stone to my place while I was in prison. Uh, and, you know, that's cool. But later I, I asked Roger Stone, look, could you just add, tell Donald Trump, because I would tell anybody, I would tell any of me, right, look, there's a cure for heroin. Maybe somebody in your retinue, you know? So, uh, we told Donald Trump, and of course, he wasn't interested. Because the guy is actually only interested. In, I don't. You could, I can't even figure that guy out. You know. I will say one thing. What happened on 
January 6th was a fascist putsch. It was equivalent to the beer hall putsch. And there's a lot of marijuana people in the anti-vaxxer group who are kind of supporting Donald Trump. And I will say that I believe we can get marijuana without having to compromise with the devil. You know? But um, we got a lot of Republicans who are pro-marijuana now. And I think we just run John Boehner for president. I'm sure he would beat Trump in a minute. He's much more personable, okay? So they don't have to pick like an outright Nazi for president. He is running, you know. And if Biden doesn't legalize pot, it's gonna be very bad. It's like when, right before the election, Hillary Clinton wouldn't really come out for legalizing pot. She says, we're gonna make it schedule two. Schedule two is like cocaine and methamphetamine. It's really illegal. You're going to jail for a long time. So, you know, that was not what people wanted to hear. And a lot of people voted for Gary Johnson, and then a lot of them became Trump supporters. So we are going to have to somehow get those guys over to us when right now they're kind of they really believe that Donald Trump is still president. You, you guys all know about QAnon, right? Yeah, they, these these people are completely insane. Okay. So anyway, you can help. I I'm just you know like a, a survivor, but I I've been around for 50 years and I've seen it come true. So I know that we can do more. And the thing is, while I was waiting for marijuana to become legalized, we developed a lot of other really great ideas. So now we can work on them. And I hope that you will come. We're going to have a table later. We're going to do joints for jams again. If you, if you did your vaccination duty, then you get a free joint. So stay tuned. Stay with the movement. I, I'm on the ACT UP meeting every Monday night. I'm the drug user rep. And uh, I'm reachable. Uh, through a Troy or Bloom or any of the people, and a lot of people just know me. Uh, we're supposed to get a new building for the city. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Otherwise, I'm going to be homeless. Uh, I'm being, the eviction was stayed by COVID. It's like the judge decided they're evicted, right? They couldn't enter the order because of COVID, right? So, but someday soon, like in six months, we're going to have to come up with, with a new building. And, you know, maybe you guys can support that because we need something for the pot movement, something for the counterculture. Something like the Yippee Museum. Got it, number nine bleaker. We got to bring back number nine bleaker, but then you're going to have to get rid of the guy with the boxing studio. That's okay. You can feed him. Anyway, my name is Dana Beal. I'm, I'm known in society in general as the, the pot guy. But in the pot movement, I'm known as the Ibogaine guy. Yeah. So if you have a friend that, you know, I, I, I'm the only place where you can get an Ibogaine treatment for $1,200 in Toronto. Okay. And when we had the medical marijuana, we had medical marijuana for $3 a gram. Okay. So that's what we're for. We're not for the multinationals making a billion dollars. We're for the little people. We are working, by the way, to have a municipal grow. And you can support this. And you see this guy from Act Up here? Brandon, put your hand up. Brandon is helping coordinate the municipal grow with Nick from NYMNJ. It's a new organization starting up. And we're going to have the city donate, uh, well, lease land, you know, every vacant lot in the city to people to grow their six plants. 
And that's the municipal growing. And that will do something about like patient access and price. So uh, stay tuned if you want to like a really legalized pot on the UN level. If you want to be able to take good LSD again, and LSD is very, very delicate. And you have to have it be handled just right. But there's LSD that makes you feel like God kissed the outside of your brain. Okay, so we need better psychedelic drugs. Not adulterated, good quality psychedelic drugs. And you can help by, if you know a Trumper who's kind of a, better, a marijuana person, but they're Donald Trump, give them eight and a half grams of magic mushrooms. That'll do it. Okay, thank you very much. This was John Sinclair's, this was John Sinclair's uh, idea. Well, you know, there's still like a Black Panther component. Because there's a secret Black Panther factory in the Ghana, in the house previously occupied by W.E.B. Du Bois, manufacturing Ibogaine for the inner city. It's happening.